Good evening, everyone. We'll take, a close, we'll take a close up look at Debbie's latest track from the National Hurricane Center coming up in just a few minutes. I want to show you some rainfall that's on the way out. We had some strong to severe storms earlier today move across the area. Not very many storms on the Treasure Coast today until this evening. And then we had this rather large isolated thunderstorm roll its way across St. Lucie County. It wasn't a severe storm, but it was packing some gusty winds and quite a bit of lightning earlier. Now, most of it has cleared the southern parts of St. Lucie County, still hanging along the coast and really up to the north a little bit from Queens Cove down to Fort Pierce Shores and just to the east of Fort Pierce. But it is moving off to the east in the Atlantic. So let's take a look at what's going to happen over the next 48 hours or so. Once this moves out, not much rainfall expected overnight and even in the morning tomorrow, just limited isolated rainfall. However, as we get to the afternoon and once again, we get that daytime heating in the mix with high temperatures, most likely in the mid 90s. Again, could see another heat advisory tomorrow. That very hot air will create a lot of instability and we could see isolated strong thunderstorms again drifting across the area. The same thing happens on Friday. That being said, there is something going on that has lowered our rain chances down to 30%. Typically this time of year, we see 40%, sometimes 50%. 30% is kind of low for early August, but here's what's happening. We've got drier air working its way down on the, along the west coast of Florida, but also kind of moving into South Florida here. And as winds shift around more southwesterly, we'll see a little more dry air over the next few days. Not enough to get rid of our rain chances altogether, but enough to lower them just a bit. Temperatures right now remain in the low 80s for everywhere except down in southern Palm Beach County, where we're still in the mid 80s right now. Here's a look at Debbie swirling around just off the coast of South Carolina, expected to move on shore, making its second landfall as a named storm later on this evening, overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning. It's going to take a little while because it's only moving at three miles per hour. However, it is moving to the north northwest now earlier today, north northeast, then north then northwest. And now it's going to head right in to South Carolina overnight, then expected to move up to the north here. And by the time we get to tomorrow night, it's going to be in North Carolina. Then it works up to Virginia by early Friday morning. And then here it goes up into New England. By the time we get to 8 p.m. Friday nights up through New York, eventually up to Maine by the time we get to Saturday morning. And then the track just kind of stops just short of Newfoundland here as it makes its way up to the north toward Canada. So that means that it's going to basically fall apart and become what we call an extra tropical or post tropical storm before we get to Sunday. And that'll be the end of that low risk for rip currents along area beaches tomorrow. Isolated thunderstorms possible in the afternoon tonight. Warm with light winds and isolated rain temperatures, mostly in the upper 70s tomorrow. Possible heat advisory isolated storms in the afternoon highs in the mid 90s as we get to Friday and Saturday. Very similar forecast to tomorrow. However, Sunday, I do think rain chances will be at about 30%, but the temperatures will be slightly cooler. And then a 40% chance for rain on Monday, the first day of school for many of the kids in our area, with temperatures staying in the low 90s through most of next week, thanks to wind shifting around to the southeast. That's a look at your forecast.